all of our hourly employees were eating off of this like afterthought of small little buffet and our leaders were ordering off of the restaurant menus so you have this person eating the eggs with the bacon wrapped scallops from like two days ago and you have this the the manager walking in with a quinoa salad with a beautiful piece of salmon on top it's like two two classes of citizens right which yeah i thought was totally wrong so what i did was my second board meeting i asked the president i said i would like to have the board meeting in the employee lounge hey everyone welcome back to this episode of private club radio your industry source for conversations news trends and updates i'm your host denny corby as always welcome back thank you all so much for being here it means the absolute world this episode i have a chat with a new fun friend of mine. We've been uh, LinkedIn buddies for a bit and connected more when we were at CMAA World Conference. Billy Panagiotopoulos, general manager of the Country Club of Darien over in Darien, Connecticut. He was definitely one of the best dressed, some of the best suiting at World Conference. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because he also wears suits, supply suits, just like I do. Worst name in the world, but love their suits and their tailoring. And I knew he was a suit supply guy. I saw it a mile away. And I brought him on because I saw what he posted on social media and I thought it'd be a cool episode, cool content because he was a very big advocate uh, for a brand new employee um, lounge, hangout, eat and workspace um, at his club. He's only been there a year and was a project that he saw and wanted to do almost immediately and was given the support and the ability to do it by his board and his club. And I thought that was really great, really important. It's not just like they redid it. Like it's not, and cause when I saw it, it, it's not like they just put in, you know, maybe some new floors and some new tables. He and the team, they went out of their way. There is branding to it. There's, there's a, there's a music area where they put in a, um, a keyboard and a guitar. So people can on their breaks, get a little creative and do what they love and what brings people together more than, than music. It's great. Uh, a great food area. It's very well cleaned, um, new paints. There's encouragement. There's it, it's, it's amazing to see and hear. And I love learning and hearing from the leaders and the people who know and want to take this serious. And then also have a club that allows them to do, to do things like this. In the conversation, we, you know, what what came up a lot is the importance of uh, and how he helped develop, you know, core values and a very positive work culture. Um, and he also talks about some of the, you know, employee benefits and programs that he has implemented at his club in a very short time. Um, and he also uh, the recognition and awards given um, to outstanding employees, which is something that he also brought in as, as well. And this is more, it was more just about, you know, what it's like building and making a, a nice new employee area and what that means on morale and how that also affects the members as well, because now the staff feels a little bit more cared for and appreciated. And that is definitely going to get past, you know, that, that emotion and that caring that the staff gives the employees is definitely going to translate to how the staff treats the members and hones that experience there. So before we get to the episode, a quick little word for some of our show partners. It's 2024 and it's time to change the way you vet your new members. Some traditions are worth modifying. The new member process hasn't changed really in the past 150 years, relying almost solely on social relationships and casual interactions, but lacking in factual data. And this is where Kenneth comes in because the traditional application process tells you very little about someone's behaviors and character until now. Kenneth has created an innovative and confidential, comprehensive applicant information gathering process that provides an unraveled depth of information. The world of member vetting has evolved to a new standard and Kenneth is your turnkey solution to meet this new industry best practice. You can rely on Kenneth to provide the facts that you need to make fully educated member decisions because what you don't know can hurt your club and your members. To learn a little bit more or to set up a call, 
head on over to membervetting.com, fill out the form. You're going to have a chat with Paul Dank. It's going to be good. He's a great guy. Also, be sure to check out our episodes of Member Vetting here on Private Club Radio. Concert Golf Partners is changing the game one club at a time. Since their inception in 2001, they've been on a mission to preserve and elevate private clubs, pouring capital into enhancements that matter. But what sets them apart? These aren't your run-of-the-mill operators. They are a dedicated team with a passion for enhancing the private club experience both on and off the green. It's their commitment to maintaining the club's unique identity while executing strategic improvements that boost the overall experience and financial health. With Concert Golf Partners, your club gains access to a network of enhanced properties, reciprocal play privileges, and a future free from the burden of debt and outdated facilities. They're not just building better clubs, they're crafting lasting legacies for members and communities alike. If you'd like to learn more about Concert Golf Partners or recapitalization or learning how your members will have no more assessments, head on over to ConcertGolfPartners.com, set up a confidential call with Peter Danula. And that's it. Simple as that. Also, be sure to check out our episodes of Board Chats here on Private Club Radio, brought to you by our friends, you guessed it, Concert Golf Partners. And now, let's welcome some of the best suiting, one of the best names in the club world, Billy Patagiotopoulos. Do me a favor. Yeah. How do you pronounce your last name? Oh my gosh, it's it's um, it's painful, right? It's, uh, so it's, Panagiotopoulos. Okay, it it looks more intimidating. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it and looks it, yeah, it definitely looks worse than it is for sure. You know? <laughs> how that must have been difficult growing up. Oh my god. You know when I mean growing up, I don't know if the if the kids do it now, but essentially you had the little scantron where you had to fill in the letter <laughs> and shade oh it in. Oh my goodness. They yeah. never had enough. They never had enough bubbles for me, you know. <laughs> now wait you're <laughs> never mind i was like i'm not gonna put your email but is your email like can you imagine is your email like your first initial <laughs> and your last name it's unbelievable <laughs> i don't know why they would set it up my last club actually we had um we had like they shortened my name it was b panagio you know at yeah you know sleepy hollow you know that yeah but um but they decided to use my uh yeah my full last name which is, which means I have the most expensive business card in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> you got the most letters. <laughs> Beck, you're you're uh, uh, married, right? What's that? Are Are you married? Yes, I'm married. Yeah, yeah. yeah. D- didn't they for like 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 wedding stuff? They would they would charge you per like letter. Yeah, exactly, like Mr. Letter. and Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they saw you came in. They're like jackpot. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Th- thankfully, you know, thankfully I'm in the industry. So I asked for favors, you know, <laughs> excuse me. Can you get your per letter down? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm happy to be chatting with you. One of the best dressed club professionals in the industry. I oh, must thanks, say, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, <laughs> always looking dapper, but I want to bring you on quick. I want to chat because uh, I just saw what you and the club did for your staff and I absolutely love it. And uh, now you, you, did you build this um, employee area? Was it already there? Did you just upgrade it? What was the, what was the story behind it? Yeah. So I'll tell you, I mean, when I first started, I started a little bit over a year ago. I started on uh, Martin Luther King day and it was a Monday. I came in and I like my beverages either very, very cold or very hot. So my coffee has got to be like, it's it's to the point where I'm not going to sue Starbucks, you know, and and I, I, I come in and I'm like, OK, I want to uh, got a heat of my coffee. And there was a gentleman here, one of the maintenance guys. He was putting my name on the door, which was pretty cool. Um, and he said, well, why don't you go up to the uh, the employee lounge? There's a, there's a microwave in there. So I go up, find, make my way up there um, and. I hope I, I see a couple people eating in there and the buffet was and this was in the morning, you know, they had some eggs and they had bacon wrapped scallops. This is this is at, you know, 10 a.m. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, this is very odd buffet. And I, I, I noticed it. It didn't look great. Right. Um, then I open up the microwave to put my coffee in there 
And if you've seen the movie Gremlins, when the <laughs> when the gremlin blows up, that's what it looked like in there. And I'm like, wow, this is pretty, this is terrible. And so, you know, I see these guys kind of eating and later in the day and later in the week, I noticed all of our hourly employees were eating off of this like afterthought of a small little buffet and our leaders were ordering off of the restaurant menus. So you have this person eating the eggs with the bacon wrapped scallops from like two days ago and you have this the the manager walking in with a quinoa salad with a beautiful piece of salmon on top it's like two two classes of citizens right which yeah i thought was totally wrong so what i did was my second board meeting i asked the president i said i would like to have the board meeting in the employee lounge ah. so he said so he said to me he's like we must be busy then right i mean we must be we must be busy. I told him, I said, well, no, we're not busy. I think that it's important that for the board to see where the employees um, relax and eat, you know, when they take their break. So he says to me, um, he says, okay, that's, that's fine, Billy. We'll do that. Next day he pops up in my office and he says, Hey, do you mind taking me up there? I've never been there before. So I said, absolutely. Take him up there, looks around. And he says, you prove your point. Um, took the executive committee there the next day. Um, and, and then after that, um, you know, we looked at like capital budget, there was some reallocation of some funds to get it done. Um, and then I designed it essentially, I knocked down some walls, I, you know, just kind of set the whole thing up. And then I worked with a, um, with a company that, that actually built the kitchen area as well. It's, I mean, you did a fantastic job from the from the signage to the uh, to, to to the actual details of putting like the 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 values and everything of the club and what the what's expected of the staff and everybody like that's all all up on the walls. That's so you didn't just do part of it like you took it and ran. Yeah, I mean that 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 whole um, that whole setup was created from scratch, right? So what we what we said is we we need to develop a vision and a mission and our core values, who we are um, as a brand. We didn't have that here. Um, so really coming from, yeah, we didn't have any of that here. So this is all new. Oh, so, um, so, so this is way more than just, uh, just an employee area. This was, this was a slightly bigger correct thing going on. The, wow. Yeah. So this was, this was big. And, 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 you know, I think that, you know, in clubs, um, you know, there's some clubs that really do it well. And then there's some other clubs that really it's an afterthought. Right. Um, but I come yeah. from I come from luxury hotels, which I'm fortunate to have been a part of some really amazing cultures. Um, I've also been a part of toxic cultures as well. Um, so I I've learned I've learned what to do and what not to do. Um, and I've been a part of three um, employee space renovations in my career. But this one was the most important because I was the GM. Like my voice was the one that was able to push this narrative that we have to make sure that not only keep the employees we have, but we, we want to find new ones, right? But it's in, in sales, they teach you keep the customers you have before you find new ones. And, and you really got to look at it at your employee base that way as well. Um, because people have options these days, right? And hospitality, like the labor market is, it's, it's tough to deal with, right? You're competing with everyone, right? So, um, it, it, it's definitely difficult. So it's important to create that culture. Well, and I think people know people who aren't in the hospitality industry know to look at the hospitality industry for, to, for like their own, you know, greedy, you know, company reasons. So it's not just about having good people there, but so, you know, you don't, they don't get poached by, you know, like your, your, your members or somebody else or Correct. you know, whoever. You're right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're, you're in competition. You're in competition with everyone, especially people want hospitality facing people, right? I mean, people that love what they do and, and create great experiences. And there's no different in, in the local deli, right? Or, or hotel, right? Hospitality is everywhere. Yeah. And you guys have, did you put a little, little music area there? What's that? Did you put like a little, like a little music area or like some musical in, instruments yes, in yeah. your, we put a, in your yeah, place? Like an eat and play area. So we put a, uh, a keyboard, we put a guitar, 
Um, and, you know, just a little kind of fun area there that people can go up there, play a little music if they'd like. Tickle the ivories. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, we're doing, we're doing things like we do this other thing called swap and drop, where if there's something that you have that, you know, some people like hold on to things constantly, they're not really using it. They may get a gift that they, they don't use. You bring it in. You put it in this swap and drop area and then someone else picks it up um, and takes it and kind of goes from there. Um, we use this lounge. This lounge is going to be the hub and the energy of where the employees eat, too. Right. And where they where they just get to know one another um, because you're dealing with seasonal employees as well. So it's they're breaking bread together. As, and, and that's and that's huge, I think, for the camaraderie uh, when you get on the, out on the floor. Um, we're going to be doing lunch and learns in there. So we're rolling out some employee benefits like medical benefits and things that we're doing. So we had representatives from the companies come in yesterday in the cafeteria and kind of walk them through what the benefit packages are and what the renewals are. So there's a lot of, lot of things that you can do out of that, out of that lounge. It's not just going there and, uh, and having a meal. How, uh, about how much did the whole project cost? Um, it costs close to close to six figures. Um, it, I mean, the kitchen equipment alone was half that. Um, we have hot and cold stations. We have coffee stations, fridges. So you have snacks there all day. Um, summertime, there'll be ice cream, you know. So it's almost, um, you know, it's one of those places. We also have residents here that live on property. So we have employees that live here. Um, so they have a place to go and get a meal throughout the entire day. Gotcha. How many, how many employees do you have total? So we get in season, we'll get about 230. Oh, snap. Yeah. And then yeah. how many do you, do you have now? Now we have about a hundred. That's still, still a yeah. healthy number. Yeah. We, a lot of our members live in the area. Um, so our club never closes. So we are, we're always open. Um, you know, Mondays is, is one of the days that we do close, um, but we don't close for a long period of time. A lot of clubs do close for routine maintenance, um, just to give the staff a break. We're one of those clubs where our members live in the area. So we're constantly keeping our F and B outlets open, our gym open, um, paddle right now is, is very popular. So we have a separate paddle area. So there's a lot of member activities still all year round here. What was it like? So you, you've been, you've been at the club a year. Yeah. A little over a year. What's it like going into a new club and helping develop its core values? Like what was that process like? Because that's gotta be a slight bit challenging because you probably have employees who've been there for years. You know, how do you come in as this newcomer and, you know, change all this stuff up and then how do you create these core values? Well, you know, the challenge is when you come in to a place new, no one knows you, right? You're not proven. Yeah. They don't trust you. They're not sure you're, what you're going to do. Um, um, I had a position that the when I first got here, there was an open position for a communications role. Um, and when I got here, I kind of looked at the HR concept. We didn't have human resources. Uh, and I And I felt that, hey, I'm going to be able to live without a communications person for a year but I'm going to add a director of human resources uh, because it's important, not only for, you know, knowing the rules, not only for accountability and being able to build those types of things, but also helping me push culture change. Now, what happens is it goes both ways, though, right? Because in one sense, you are um, setting up these these um, metrics of accountability. You're putting in we're doing annual reviews. Um, there, there's a little bit more of the structure to the organization where people fear that now you're new. My first hire is HR. If you don't understand what HR is, you, your initial thought, at least a long, long tenure employees, oh, this guy's going to clean house. He's going to fire everybody. That's why he's bringing the HR director in. So it kind of, the narrative was, was, was switched up because I really thought, you know, what is human resources? They're pretty simple, right? You break down the word. Human is all about human capital. It's all about the people, right? Resources is having a resource and a neutral area that you can go to and, you know, just talk about 
whatever issues you may have, right, uh, that we can remedy. But um, I think the challenge was initially was, okay, well, they took it the opposite way where it was going to be a negative impact on them. Um, and, and that's because they didn't understand what human resources really means in an organization. Um, the only thing that fixes that is time, where they start to see the programs that are coming, the benefits for employees. And developing the core values for me and the vision and the mission of the club is talking to the executive leaders and, and getting a feel of what this club has been. And then that's also composed with, hey, what's our mission and what's our vision? Where do we want to go, right? First thing, if I ask you right now, Denny, jump in the car. First thing you're going to ask me is where we're going, right? I have to be transparent and let you know where you're going, where we're going. So you have the opportunity to either come with me or jump out. Um, and I think that organizations have to develop a standard and say, hey, this is the standard. Here's the benchmark. Um, it's going to be up here. Um, I will put you on my back and carry you up to that benchmark, but I'll not take a step down for anyone. And I think the core values, while they're personalized to this organization, they can bode well in any organization. Engaging new members is a breeze with the award-winning new member onboarding program by our friends over at Members First. Now, this is a unique welcome center and customized microsite aligned with carefully curated emails that make your new members feel appreciated and engaged. This program delivers a consistent process of familiarizing your new members with their club's amenities and programs to ensure that they're engaged by your club early and often. And this whole thing is custom and done in-house. There isn't any templates. There aren't any stock procedures. This is to ensure the right voice and tone for your club. The Members First New Member Onboarding Program is the real deal and not a big time commitment for you or your club. How, what was your process of finding the core values. I'm sure there was probably a bunch of interviewing the staff and the members and all of that stuff, right? I kept this more staff centric gotcha. than member centric, right? Um, that makes obviously, sense. Obviously, you know, you know, not really getting member feedback, so to speak, but I, but obviously just knowing myself what the member expectation is going to be. Gotcha. Um, but sitting down with my, my core um, leaders getting to know the staff, um, getting to know the culture of this club. Um, every culture obviously is slightly different uh, as you go, whether it's state to state or club to club. Um, but you also want to have your hand on what do you want it to be? What's our identity? And, um, you know, honestly, I think we had a little bit of an identity crisis um, so I, I felt it was my responsibility to kind of bring it all together and lead the way of where we're going, um, with, with their input. And where did you get the line? Hospitality is not a skill. It's a spirit. You know, I don't, it just, in, I feel that every day, you know, I wake up, I had, I had an old boss that said, you know, Bill, you wake up determined, you go to bed satisfied. That's the only way you do it, right? And and I've done every job in a hotel. Um, I started, I was a doorman, I was front desk, I was concierge, I, I made beds, I was housekeeping, I worked in F&B, I worked in sales. And all the all the people across the board, whether it was, it was someone washing dishes alongside me or a general manager who's speaking to, you know, over a hundred leaders, they all had a spirit. They all had this, this energy and this positivity that pushed what hospitality was. Skill can always be taught, right? You can, I meet people all the time and maybe they don't have the experience on a resume, but they have a great attitude and they're willing to help. They see a piece of paper on the ground, they pick it up, you know, even when you're not looking. And, and that to me is a spirit, like right? you're there. You're, you're just wanting to take care of things and take care of people. And then the skill of the trade and the trade of the job, we can teach you and, and kind of put those together. And that's, and that's where, uh, where that little tagline came from. No, I like that. Cause you have it in super nice, nice and big on the, on the wall of your new, uh, 
in the yes. employee area. So yeah, that was my and, HR and, director. I don't want to. I don't want to be too narcissistic, right? Putting my own name up on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and what type of stuff do you put up on your wall of fame? Is that all just a bunch of different uh, awards? Is it uh, what what type of stuff do you, you put up there? So essentially what we did, we started at, you know, a lot of hotels and a lot of clubs have this uh, established, but we do an employee of the quarter. We started this year, employee of the quarter, leader of the quarter. Um, and those for those employees that go above and beyond, it's not about just doing your job. It's, it's going that extra mile, doing those extraordinary things that make an experience special or make the business better. Um, and we look at that and celebrate that on a employee level, also on a leadership level. Um, so we do it four quarters and whoever wins either leader of the quarter or employee of the quarter at the end of the year, um, wins could win leader of the year or employee of the year. And they get a, um, they get a $5,000, um, vacation. So we, you know, pay for their okay. flight, put that out there. Um, and, you know, it just gives people motivation, gives them, you know, and I think that the, the club is, you know, is happy to do it, right? Because they know that you push these great employee programs, their member experience is going to be better because you just have happy employees. Um, well, and then and, at that point, they're going to have great stories. And of course, the the, the members are going to want to hear, uh, you know, hear yes. about it. And now you're just creating this amazing atmosphere of, oh, that's so good. So yeah. good. I, de I developed a, a newsletter. You know, obviously, we have the you see behind me, the cow is in our logo. Yeah. So I, I, I'd like to take branding to, you know, to try to take it to another level. Right. So I took a new I created a newsletter. I call it the herd. H E R D, and in the herd we put a um, we put a, a a letter in there that's called the heart of the house, and we focus on an employee here, and we 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 basically let the employee tell their story. How did they get here today, right? And uh, there's some fantastic stories. Obviously, they're, they're, they, the are, member they side, are they are very moving. That? Yeah, moving. There you go. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I have. It's funny. I I've got a food truck. I've got a food truck here that I purchased. It's called the Moo Bar, and it's by our halfway house. Everything's black and white. Every uh, the branding is all cowhide, right? Yeah. Um, but you know, kind of going on that theme. But that heart of the house essentially focuses and highlights one employee and their story because everybody has a story. Yeah. Everybody does. You know how they got here today, and everybody's story is different. Um, so it's, it's, it's great for the members to, to really get to know employees on that level. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's amazing. Um, so I, th I've gotten, I've gotten clubs from all over asking me to come see it. Um, ask me how I did it, ask me, oh, the story cool. it, which is great, which is, which is really nice. It's moving for people to, to reach out and say, you know, I was recently at a, a trade show. And um, a lot of people were stopping me. And I had one of my employees, my director of F&B, come to me and said, you know, someone looked, they, they would look at her name tag and they would see the Country Club of Darien. They're like, you guys are crushing it over there. And that That's lounge cool. is amazing, which was nice to hear. I think she felt, she felt spectacular because people were noticing her and then she worked there, right? Yeah. So it's, and that's, that's always, you know, that's the payback. It's, 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 uh, it's one of those, like, so for me, you know, from like the, the entertainment standpoint, you know, when the audience goes, you know, like the uh, muggles go like, Oh, good job. But when somebody in your industry goes like, yo, good set or something, you're like, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Like, when, like, when, like, when, like, 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 like one of your own, like game, um, recognized game, you're like, okay, good. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what it is, right? If you're, if your peers are saying to you, I love what you're doing. You're doing great. And, and, you know, like I'll go to, when you go to conference, right. I'll talk to these guys and I, and I look at what they do and they're long tenured and they're so smart and they, they're so successful and they'll come over to me and say, I love, I love all the stuff you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing, you know? And you know, that like obviously motivates me, makes me feel great. Right. Um, but it's, it's nice to hear that there's people watch, you know, there, and that's why I push, 
marketing yourself because I live, I live the brand, right? Like wherever I go, like, you know, it's behind me right now. It's, yeah. it's when I come in, my jacket has the logo. What every brand that I've worked. Did, did you put the uh, antlers on the on the <laughs> front of your vehicle, like the uh, yeah, right. the, the horns? <laughs> yeah, right. And you know, but any brand that I work for, I feel that you got to live, eat, breathe, and and that's the brand, right? That you represent. And I always tell people, you market that, and what happens is, you, yes, you're marketing the brand, but you're also marketing yourself. Because people see that and say, this guy's a company guy. This is a guy who, if he's leading my club or leading my organization, he's going to push out whatever is positive about the organization so everybody knows about it, which I think is which is big in an industry that doesn't really promote much. Yeah. No, it's true. That's true. Yeah. But That's good stuff. All's good. You're having a good hair day today, buddy. I finally had to get it cut. Uh, it, was, it was getting out of, it was getting, it, it's still a little, little too long, but, uh, but yeah, well, it's what, all good. What, man. uh, what, 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 what suit you were in there, bud? What's that? I said, what, <laughs> what suit are you wearing there, bud? Oh, this is suit, suit supply, buddy. Ooh. Three piece. I, I the love blue. three, I, oh, a, a good, th I try, I try to get most suits three, uh, th three piece. It's just yeah, something. I know. It's I just I, I love don't know. three piece. A lot of people don't wear them anymore, though. Um, which which makes it more enjoyable to wear because people are like, yes. oh shit. Like <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I love the three. I love three piece. I I do love double breasted too. I like a, a good double breasted suit. I I have not ventured into the double breast. I have um, a I have a double breasted vest. I haven't done a full double breasted yeah. suit. It's uh, they're they're nice. I mean, listen, not for all the time, but I feel like the double breasted is a is a good, um, you know, it's good. It was much better when I was 30 pounds lighter. Uh, but, you know, listen, what stay can out you of do, the employee right? lounge. I don't have to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't have to. I got nobody to impress. I got I got a beautiful wife and I got seven kids. So, no, I you mean, don't. Yeah, I got seven. Wait, are you serious? Yeah, seriously. Dude, you're a jackrabbit. <laughs> so, I'm seven. You, listen, yeah. Don't take this any offense. Same woman. Same, yeah. Same woman. Damn. And the crazy, you know, the crazy thing is, and listen, I, I shook your hand out there. You, you know, I would get tested. You may be pregnant. <laughs> um, so, uh, <laughs> but my my wife the other day, my wife the other day, she's like, she's in the mirror and she's like. She's like, oh, she's like, oh, look, I'm getting my abs back, right? And I'm saying to myself, I'm looking at her and I'm like, I look like I delivered the kids. Like I'm the one that carried them for nine months. You know, it's incredible. Now, it, this, that just blew me away. Wow. I don't think I had any clue. I, I know. I, wow. What, yeah. what are the age range? What's, what's the. So my oldest, my oldest is 12 and my youngest is seven months. And so, you're how yeah. old? What's that? I'm 44. Okay. I, I, yeah. I, I thought you were, we were like right around there. I thought you were a little bit younger. Okay. Thank God. Right. I look, thank yeah. God I look younger. That's because I don't stay home with the kids. I, I'm always working. <laughs> I don't have the, my, my poor wife, you know, like I leave and she's looking at me like, don't leave. I need your help, you know? Um, but yeah, it's a challenge, but listen, kids are a blessing, you know? Yeah. And the, the crazy, the crazy thing is when I was dating my wife, um, I remember picking her up one day and she was, she was tear, she was crying. Right. And I said to her, I was like, what's wrong? Is everything okay? And she said, well, went to the doctor. Doctor said that is not a good chance. I'm going to be able to have children. And I know that you want a family and I, I can't do that to you. And I said to her, I said, look, we're in love. Like if we got to adopt a kid, we'll adopt a kid. It's whatever it is, right? Yeah. And fast forward, I got seven, all natural. Yeah, Wrong, you know? <laughs> Side note, that doctor appointment never happened. She exactly. was just seeing how you would. It was just a exactly. test and you passed. Yeah. Fertile My myrtle superintendent over here. loves me, though. My superintendent, because 
any kind of dead brush or anything, I walk by it, it blooms. That's like, you know, I got that, you know, I have. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed that. Billy, thank you so much for being on and sharing all of that information. If you enjoyed that episode, you know what I always ask. If you can like, share, subscribe to the content, to the information, anything you can do to help move our channel forward means the world. If you have not done so already, sign up for the newsletter. Head on over to privateclubradio.com right up on top. Sign up for the newsletter. Get all of our updates and all the content that we put out weekly into a nice organized email. And that's it. Until next time, catch on the flippity flip.